Hey, this is John Carlos, and I'm really excited to be reviewing the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Classic Collection figures from the 1990 movie. These were available at San Diego Comic-Con 2014 at the Entertainment Earth booth. I don't know if they're exclusive or if they're just like an exclusive pre-release. We might see these in Toys R Us's later in the year, maybe next year. Um, but either way, let's go unbox one of these, and uh, we'll review all of them. Here's a look at all four of them, and the uh, packaging on the back is the same for all of them as well, but here's the closer look with the little packaging spiel on the back and then a bunch of photos from the movie. Now, unboxing one of these will be interesting because the uh, packaging is lined with tape on not only the two sides and the bottom, but going across the top too. At least there's no twist ties or anything to take off. They come right out. Starting off with Donnie, I want to talk to you guys about the articulation because there's a little thing with here that I have a problem with uh, with other toys too, and that is if the bicep is a little tight, like this one, having to move it down caused me to have to grab it by the bicep, which I feel is a small joint. And if something is tight like that, I always feel like I'm gonna break the bicep off. Like this left shoulder is a little tight. I just have to push in when I move it down. Otherwise, I feel like I'm gonna rip the uh, bicep off the shoulder, so that's a problem. But that aside, there are a lot of good things. Let's talk about his hands. I thought these fingers would move together, but they are individual finger joints. Not only that, his thumb rotates and has its own hinge. How rad is that? It's got a good wrist joint that, the, uh, that this little brown section kind of covers up really well. But you can see that there is a hinge in there. Uh, basic double elbow joint, which I really, really like double knee joint, which I really, really like, and having these uh, knee pads there really do help cover that up a bit. It's got the mid thigh cut, and it's got individual toe articulation, so that's great, aside from the ankle articulation. But what I really like is his like mid chest cut with his shell kind of attached, so you still get a decent range of motion. His head also doesn't really move that much, but it does turn and pivot a little bit, so that's cool. Um, his expression, is kind of one of the doofier ones of the four. But I do like the way they painted his eyes and that they sculpted his bandana nice and long. Now this figure comes with two accessories. The sewer grate themed figure stand, which all four figures come with, and his bow staff, which as you can see is a little curved from the packaging. But uh, I do dig that with the uh, finger grip and the thumb grip, you can get these figures to hold their weapons really well at least when you uh, articulate the wrist into the right position. And, and I also like that the bow staff fits into the back strap. And that his, uh, his outfit is screen accurate. You know, he's got the one solid thick strap, whereas Leo had the double thin strap. So I like that they uh, managed to capture all that. Now let's take a look at the, the uh, sculpt of these, because I think they did a great job with uh, them overall. All four of them have the same shell, so that's okay. Um, but what I was expecting initially was just the same uh, Playmate figures that they'd already made with this kind of articulation. They're sort of retro classic collection figures. Um, but they didn't recycle that much, really. Like, the chest is completely different, because the cartoon one had that edge to it. So, like, this is a new chest. Um, their new thighs. I thought they were just going to use the same, you know, mold, but these these legs are more detailed than the cartoon style ones. Uh, the heads are different, like the neck paint, you know, the neck uh, sculpt is different. I'm not sure about the bicep arms. They might be the same. I'm not really sure, but overall these are really different, and I really thought they were going to go cheap and use the same stuff. So good job to them, because I really like the way that they sculpted the chest. It does look the way it does in the movie, so that's great. I like the use of the brown padding. The sculpting on these little details, if you look inside there, like the way they kind of bend, the material kind of pinches and bends in, I think that looks great. I like the attention to detail with the screen accurate um, belts and like shoulder slings. Well, I think the way they sculpted the legs, the, the musculature, even just like the toes, they did a great job sculpting these. I mean, it's a simple sculpt, but it's very clean, very effective looking, and it certainly honors 
the Jim Henson Company's work in that first movie, including Leo, who also has a really doofy face. I think he has the doofiest. But if you uh, notice in the fight scenes, like where they switch out heads from more like action-oriented heads, like I think in April's apartment when he's fighting one of the foot soldiers, he is making this face. So it is a pretty screen accurate face. And I do like the way they handled his bandana. I think it looks good. Uh, I've got pretty tight arms on this one as well. In fact, all four turtles have really tight shoulders. I've noticed. But, um, oh, there's one thing we need to attach here his katana holders, which you do have to kind of make some effort to really get in there to stay on. But it looks cool. And here's Leo with both of his swords. I do like the swords are screen accurate in their shape and the way the blade is shaped. And here's a look at Mikey. Uh, the problem with those shoulders not being able to move very much means I can't get his arms to come in too tight. Maybe I'm going to have to dunk him in some warm water to soften them up a bit. Maybe then they'll move better, but again, you know, I can't get them to get closer to hold his nunchucks tighter. But uh, the nunchucks do fit very well into the uh, back of his uh, belt. Now, in fact, I can plug these in and show you just how well they move. They're made of like a soft rubber. And that little kind of triangle sticking out does hold them into place really well. Whereas like his hands, you know, if you get just the right circle, the nunchucks will slide right out. But that little stopper in there at least keeps these into place. Um, let me talk about the paint on these. It's not a lot of paint to speak of. Uh, like this is all like one kind of brown rubber. This is one kind of material. This is one kind of material. The only really paint you deal with is the eyes, which Mikey is the only one that kind of suffers from a bad paint job. You can see his eye doesn't fully fit within the socket and there's white paint and bleeding everywhere outside of it. Other than that though, the four of these have pretty solid paint jobs on the teeth and the eye area. Um, I really like the way they sculpted his mask on this one. This is one of the better face sculpts. I think Mikey and Raph have the good heads. Leo and Donnie have the sillier ones. They sculpted in this dimple. I think that looks really good. And again, it, it uh, kind of honors what the actual sculpt was for the Ninja Turtles heads that the Jim Henson Company did. And they're doing a really good job with the bandanas in particular. The way they rest on the head, the way they hang off the back. If you love the movie, these really do kind of represent how they look in the movie really well. And this belt is pretty uh, accurate as well. I like the way that they uh, the belt can't kind of fit around so they kind of have like a sculpt break but it's a good choice for a toy. I think they did a good job doing that. Lastly we got my favorite, Raph. He's my favorite turtle and I think he's my favorite figure of this series. Not just because he's my favorite turtle. I think they did a great job with his head. I think he's got like a cool little snarl there. They did a great job painting his teeth. It's got a lot of good attitude. It's certainly a Raph kind of attitude. I think his eyes are painted well. And uh, he holds his size really well. And I really dig that his size are screen accurate, the, uh, the actual shape of them here, the way they kind of cut out like that at the edge. That's totally how they look in the movie. So I'm really digging this figure a lot. Um, one minor nitpick is Leo, Donnie, and Mike all have different sculpts for the uh, bandana, but he and Mikey have the exact same kind. It's just a different paint. So that's a, a mild annoyance, but, uh, you know, the articulation on these is pretty solid. Even when their thighs are a little tight, they, uh, they do eventually budge. My only real problem with these is the shoulder and that some of them, the biceps are a little loose. Uh, lastly, we'll take a look at the uh, figure stand and how he connects onto it. Because I haven't really put any of these on yet. But yeah, seems to work out pretty good. I was pretty impressed with the Playmates classic collection of the animated Ninja Turtles as like deluxe figures. I thought they looked really good, but these are like the next step up. They look awesome. I also didn't ever expect Playmates to make these, so the fact that these even exist is a real treat for me. I think if they'd made these when I was a nine-year-old kid when the movie came out, my head would have exploded. As it stands as an adult, I really like these a lot. I think they turned out great, and they look more like the movie characters than I actually expected them to, so that's awesome. Thanks for watching!